is on now. Huh? Peace everyone. I haven't done one of these in a long time. <laughs> Peace. Rich. <laughs> What's up brother? I don't know how to wave back. Peace. Maybe if I hit your name will it wave back? Nah the hell with it. <laughs> Peace. Who else is here? I ain't seen in a while. Sister Zakia. What's happening? Yeah. I haven't done this in a minute. Jay. What's up, nephew? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Peace, brother. Peace, Zakia. Yeah. I got caught out in the rain here trying to uh, make myself a better man so I figured you know I haven't done a live in a real long time so let me uh, let me do one of those peace Scorpion 1982 yeah you know so real quick um you know I always try to give something when I get on a live even though it's probably I probably haven't done one since like last year you know what I mean? But um, I was just thinking about didn't mean to do the hearts. <laughs> it's cool. I mean, men men can give each other hearts. You know, it's it's all right, man. It's you know, I think the colors matter. I'm not I'm not real tight on the whole emoji things, but I think the color of the heart. You can give a black heart or a blue heart. I think it's you know, I think it's something different. I think. You know, I'm not too versed on the heart piece, you know. But, yeah, man, I was just here uh, kind of stuck in the rain, in the rain at the same time. And um, just kind of thinking about everything that's been happening. And, you know, a good friend of mine called me earlier today. And was like, we were reminiscing about some things, you know. But, um, yeah, matter of fact, Rich. We was talking about um, Fourth Street, Fourth Street, um, Fourth Street Park basketball tournaments. You know, you remember those <laughs> across the street from the projects back in the days. You know, oh, my friend Rich here, he would know. But uh, yeah, we was just talking about some of the action at Fourth Street basketball tournaments across the street from the projects, and just you know, reminiscing stuff that used to happen back in the days in the hood. You know, but um, it just made me think about you know, some of the things that are happening now and then the rain came and you know like the rain is Aguato Agbo Ato Anavia Anavia. Yeah, they got me messing it up. Like they mess it up. But um you know that that rain man, that's that fertilization. And it's that masculine energy fertilizing the feminine energy of the earth it just kind of made me think about like all the men right now especially like some of the men like myself that that have some years on them are they impregnating the new earth or the, or, or the new feminine energy man are they impregnating them with new ideas or fertilizing the old ideas of the elders you know Jessica, peace, Queen of Wands. Peace, Aldere. Oh, that rain is still coming on me. Okay. Actually, it feels good though. Yeah, it's nice little, nice little clean, clean, clean stuff off of your aura. You know, rain is always good because it's so nurturing, and it, the rain is, is a substance of love coming down from on high. So like when rain comes, I saw people usually pray for rain. They ask for rain. You know what I mean? 
because uh, when rain arrives, it represents that the creator has formed itself in substance and showered upon you. You know what I mean? So the rain is like representative of the love of the creator being on you. <laughs> yeah, peace, Nat. I'm not hearing your voice, but I can imagine it. <laughs> you know, peace now, peace, nephew. <laughs> um, Obadina. Yeah, man, but... Yeah, man, that rain is its like... It just had me thinking, man. I was, like I said, I was just thinking about some of my adventures. Well, not thinking, but me and my friend were, were reminiscing on some of our adventures back in the days. And, um, you know, growing up, coming up as young men. And, um, you know, just, <laughs> just looking at some of the older heads and some of the adventures that we had, like, proving ourselves, if you will because that's what it was, but proving ourselves to the older heads in the neighborhood and kind of letting them see that, like, you, you know, we were tough. <laughs> you know, like, you, you couldn't really do what you wanted to us or whatever. Or, like, we were we were ready to stand on your side of the basketball court now and watch the game. Like, we could be there. And, um, you know, it just got me thinking about, like, as we get older, now, now I'm, I'm older than... Peace, E. Peace, E. What's going on, brother? What's going on? But uh, it got me thinking about, you know, well, I, now I'm older than some of those older heads. And, um, like, what are, we, what are we fertilizing the ground with? You know what I mean? Like, when you're in a space, everything should be better because you're there. You know, if you're conscious, if you're bringing a love vibration, if you're bringing a strength. If you're bringing awareness, like you can't, you can't be hyper conscious and still be in a ghetto, you know, because a ghetto is, is mental. It's, it's a mental thing, but you can't be hyper conscious and still live in a mental ghetto because like, what are you actually doing in that space that you're at? Like, what are you pouring onto the land? Like how the rain is coming on the land right now. Like I was just looking at the rain hit the ground and, you know, just looking at some of the the birds and the, and the rabbits run around and, and whatnot and and i'm seeing them enjoying that fertilization of love and like just got me thinking you know so many people are looking for answers right now you know what i mean and especially in terms of the feminine so many women are like lost and maybe there was a seed of something planted at some point maybe by their father but like are the newer men fertilizing that seed if it was something of value you know or are they just um like whatever <laughs> you on you on your own you know what i mean so uh yeah it's just an interesting time right now i don't know you know well i do know i don't want to say i don't know that's a that's an unnecessary conjuncture but um yeah we got to start like really fertilizing the earth again man and like i said the rain is that fertilization of love that comes down onto the earth and we've been missing that and and a lot of what we've been doing that's why we haven't really been able to organize because love is a galvanizing force love is the glue that that pulls things together in a primitive sense so they don't even know why they come together but just because they match you know what i mean so it makes it um a lot of them lost because they had a terrible mother true too you know what i mean but, you know, at the same time, they, they everybody made a bad decision. You can't separate a mother from a father. You know what I'm saying? You can't have a mother without having a father. Just like you can't have a father without having a mother. I know we live in a society that separates them. You know what I mean? I'm your mama and your daddy. You know, we say, like, backward stuff like that. But the truth is, you can't have one without the other. And any time a child is made from a primitive sense, it's because somebody has a desire to nation build. There's no children made, you know, prince. <laughs> All the way from Nigeria. What are you doing up this late? I don't know what, what time is it over there. I know it's late. <laughs> How's everything in Lagos? But, um, yeah, man, like, if you come in together, man, you come together because you want a nation build. Even if you don't know, good, good. Tell, tell Razak. I, I send my greetings, priest, Prince. Tell Razak. I'm thinking about him. Tell him I send my greetings. You know? <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 a team across the waters. We got we got multiple teams, 
But um, it's still raining. Yeah, it's getting a little better now. It's lightening up a little bit. I don't want the phone to get wet. But yeah, man, you know, like I'm gonna stand in the rain for a little bit. But you can't. You, it's a, it's a, it's a mission of nation building that we go through, and then a lot of times we forget that point. You know what I mean? We forget that point, and it, and it, we primarily forget that point because we're using someone else's definitions of how of what it means that we're even together. I, I'm with her because I love her, or because that's my man, that's my woman. You know, like, and what happens is like when you create those, when you when you use that that kind of phraseology. What happens is that you create idols. Peace, Ross. Oh, I'm getting the phone wet. All right, let me get back under the bungalow. <laughs> but when you use that kind of phraseology, what happens is that you create idols in, in the back of your brain. You know what I mean? I don't know if I got water on the phone, man. I don't know if there's water on the lens. You know what I mean? I don't want to use my T-shirt to clean, clean it because then my belly button might show. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> this ain't no Prince concert. You know what I mean? I want y'all to see my, my gorgeous dad body, you know? So you just let me know if there's water on the lens, and uh, I'll wipe it off maybe on my shoulder or something. You know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, you know, we we use the wrong kind of, um, <laughs> we use the wrong kind of <laughs> phrases, and um, we set up these idols, you know what I'm saying? Peace, Aquia. Peace, peace, peace. You know. Oh, okay, good. So the water didn't hit the lens. Good. It didn't look like it. Good, 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 good. Um, your fans are missing you here, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, as soon as they open the border, I'll be back home. But you know, Prince, you need to go. You need to go talk to the president of Nigeria, man. Tell him, you know, Baba is trying to get back across the border. They locked the border because of COVID. Tell them I'm trying to come back home, man. Go, you need to go to the palace. Talk to the talk to the president. <laughs> they got me stuck here in America. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, man. You know, so I don't know. Just something I was thinking about. Looking at the rain, like I don't think we're fertilizing at the level that we're supposed to, and I don't think we're pouring that conscious love on that feminine earth as much as we supposed to be, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you too, man. I miss everybody. I miss everybody, Prince, man. Definitely. I miss everybody. <laughs> um, but, you know, so it's just something, I don't know, man, something to think about, you know, like, and I'm not saying it's all on the men because it's definitely not, you know what I mean? It's, like I said, it's a collaborative effort. You can't really have one without the other. It's a baptism. Yeah, man, it is, it is. But some people, are, you know, e, some people are dodging the baptism. That's like, that's the issue. It's like trying to get in out of the rain. You know what I mean? Like, to avoid what? To avoid your aura being cleansed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, no, don't cleanse my aura. Keep, keep the grunge on it. You know? So, it's the same thing now, man. You know what I mean? Some people are being deflected from what's really happening, and when that rain comes, man, you know. That's what you asked for. It's like people, they dance and they sing and they drum for rain to come. And then the rain comes and then you you start trying to dodge a raindrop. <laughs> you know, you, you start trying to dodge raindrops, man. Like, all right. Okay. Nothing. All right. Um, you know, I'm old school paranoid. You know, old heads like me always looking out. Hold on, nephew. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens when you get older. You get old school paranoid. You know what I mean? <laughs> Can't nobody be like 50 feet around you. <laughs> that's because as we get older, our muscles get old. They don't move as fast. That's why we be so paranoid. It ain't, it's not really because we so tough. It's just because we can't take a beating anymore. But, um... Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, man, <laughs> so, yeah, man, I don't think we fertilizing stuff like we supposed to. Y'all always laughing at me, man, <laughs> every time I say something. <laughs> Y'all always laughing. <laughs> you think I'm joking? <laughs> Telling you, man, you, you get older, man, you catching injuries all crazy for no reason. 
You know what I'm saying? Trying to carry groceries. And next thing you know, your back is all weird. And you know what I'm saying? You got needles sticking out of you. You know what I'm saying? Because you tried to bring a box of cereal down from the cabinet. You know what I mean? I ain't got those issues, but regular guys do. You know, not not uh, supernaturals like myself. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I wish you could save this word to when you get here, bro. <laughs> Man, you and Razak are funnier than me. When I when you and Razak are together, you guys are much funnier than me. Yeah, yeah, Anavia. Uh, we know you sell CMOS. Thank you, sis. I know. CMOS. I know. <laughs> I don't have bad joints. I'm just saying, you still got to be careful. I'm strong, man. I could probably pick four of y'all up, run you across the parking lot, and throw you into the reservoir. And then swim you back out if I wanted to. I'm strong. You know what I mean? I'm real. I'm, I come from good stock. You see? I come from good stock. I don't really come from servant stock. You know what I mean? I, I come from real powerful royal stock. I mean, if it was like, if it was still to my offer, I would go for a lot of money. I would definitely go for a lot of money because I could lift junk. I could lift a lot of junk. You know what I mean? So I'm 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 real strong. You know what I mean? I I, I would catch a hefty price. You know what I mean? Like my bride price even would be really high. You know what I mean? Because I lift junk. I could lift a lot of junk, man. You know what I mean? That's probably not gonna stop. I'm gonna just be a big old mean strong man. You know? But uh for the rest of you, foolish mortals. <laughs> Nah, yeah, man. I'm just saying, man. The rain, the rain. You know what I mean? We gotta, we gotta, we gotta like really take a look at what's happening. You know what I mean? Like, especially as men, like, are we really fertilizing? And of course, not all ground is gonna receive that that nurturing, that substance, that that substantiated love. You know what I mean? That's that's the that's the sad part about all of it. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes you pour in on hard rock. You know what I mean? Y'all tell me if you get raindrops on that screen, because the wind is blowing different now. You know what I mean? So I don't know if it's going to um, put a drop on the, on the joint. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, man, sometimes we're pouring on sand. Okay. Sometimes we're pouring on sand, man, and, um, you know what I mean? Sometimes we're, you, like you said, you're a top chocolate. You got to find the right field to see exactly you know what i'm saying oh no drops okay yeah and then sometimes you might find a, a feel that looks really good but it's been it's been worked too many times you know what i'm saying it's just been worked too many times so by the time you get to it it's too acidic you know when you farm a, uh when you farm something for too long eventually the, you have to let the earth the, the, that soil cycle because it'll become acidic and then what happens is the food you grow in it will have a the pH balance will be off. The food will also be acidic. You know what I mean? So sometimes we, something may look fertile. It might even be fertile, but it's like you got to look at well, what is it going to bring forth? You know, like what is it? What has it been trained to? Um, because it, sometimes it might already been a seed there, and then you fertilizing a bad seed. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you're fertilizing a bad a, a bad seed. That's why you know a lot of times top chocolate like. And I've said it so often, like, we're not as wise in mate selection as we try to pretend that we are, just because, like, you know, we think we've grown. You know what I mean? A lot of times, um, you really need to have a vetting process for the people that you're going to be with, you know what I'm saying? Because um, there's just so many factors sometimes to look at that we don't, that we're not aware of. And especially as women, you know what I mean? Like, you might get your soil flipped too many times. You know, um, and then by the time you kind of get wise to a situation, your heart just isn't there like it once was. You don't have as much as your heart left or your heart is still divided because you're carrying the imprint of other men because you may have had their children. Once you have the children, that imprint is in you, you know, and if that man is still alive, unless he dies, you know, if he dies, then it's different. But if his imprint still walks the earth, if his spirit still walks the earth, then that means his imprint is still alive in you. And the feminine responsibility is to maintain the imprint of memory. You know, that's why women, you know, when it's something happening, they're the first to try to remind you of something. You know what I mean? Or say, tell you you didn't say it like this, you said it like that. And, you know, they remember what they want to remember. You know what I mean? But um, with the masculine, you're kind of made 
to go out and get hardened and, and to get toughened. And sometimes that means you're going to take more knocks. But the truth is you only got two heartbreaks too. You know what I mean? Two heartbreaks and you're, you're dead inside. You just know how to front it off. You know, but there ain't much left. Oh, the rain's starting to clear. Okay. What's it say? Damn, getting your soil flipped too much, now you're acidic. Yeah? That's why we have certain things in place so that happens. Like a lot of times we're trying to, because we're working off of a poverty model, we're always trying to figure out like, well, if that happens, any event of that happening, what should I do? Don't let it happen. <laughs> that's that's what you do in the event of that. Some things you can't come back from. That's just the way it is, man. Some things you can't you can't come back from, man. If I if I told you I was I was locked up at 25 and I was busting open everybody's jumper and running up in every man's dookie hole, but that was only in jail and I ain't been locked up since, would you still look at me the same? Or would or would you be like, oh, okay, that was then, but now? Or would you be like, you can't come back from certain things, brothers? You got dookie on the tip. You know, so some things you can't go back, come back from. And that's why culture is so important, man. When we negate culture, it's a lot of times we we create a karma for ourselves that we got to deal with for the rest of our lives. Let's say I should be banned from it. I'm banning myself. OK, I don't know what that means. Women don't realize they get imprinted by every guy they are with in one way or another. Yeah, so do we. So do we. Solutions for dysfunctional family relationships. Key advice on mating on child rearing. Yeah, absolutely. Can you remove an imprint from someone you are not with? No. They're there forever. You can you can minimize it, and what you do is you burn out the old imprints of light with greater imprint, imprints of light, right? So um, if you're with, a let's say, a lesser man, and then you get with a greater man, then ultimately, oh, Jasmine, I ain't seen your name in a minute. Miss New Orleans. Uh, you neither. Miss Oklahoma. Everybody's coming out the woodworks today. <laughs> but yeah, like, basically what happens is that you have to allow yourself to be saturated by a greater light. But like, that's the challenge because you may, after, after a certain amount of, um, of heartaches, what happens is that you're, you're going to be more closed. You're going to be more guarded. But the only way for you to actually heal from where you're at is to have another man, just like how the rain. Yeah, you, Jasmine. I said Jasmine. <laughs> um, I think you're from New Orleans. Yeah, you're from New Orleans. Yeah, that's where I met you, I think. Right? Didn't I meet you in New Orleans? But anyway, um, it becomes difficult. <laughs> because you know having another man now completely fill you and saturate you and envelop you in a cleansing light becomes harder because it's like the catch 22 like okay yes yes exactly i knew it so i got a memory too i got a memory um that's where the challenge comes in you know what i mean that's where the challenge comes in because it's like i've been hurt by that experience but I gotta, you know, I gotta go through it to get out of it. And sometimes we try to go over it to get out of it. So a lot of times when we have heartache, it's like, oh, just get over it. You need to just get over that. You can't get over heartache. It doesn't work that way. You gotta get through heartache. That's the only way that you can remove heartache from your psyche. And the way you get through it is that you gotta face the, the very exact same thing that um, tore your soul apart. You know, sucks, right? <laughs> That's the way we're designed, though. You know what I mean? Like, there we go. Okay. Yeah. It's clearing up now. You know, the creator is the best knower. You got to always, always know that. You know what I'm saying? It's still raining a little bit. Let me not get the raindrops on there. But, um, so what about the Baba that says he can heal you with his semen? He probably can. You know, he can channel healing through his semen. But is that Baba your man? There's a difference. Like, is has he created a, a spiritual contract with you? Or is he just, you know, whacking off in a, in a cup and saying, here, pour this all over you with some gin? Because that's what some guys do. And I've seen guys do that. Well, I haven't seen it with my own eyes. I ain't got no hands-on experience with that. You know, no pun intended. But, um, yeah, I've heard of things like that. You can be healed. Just like if a man allows a woman to ride her, ride him, 
in the Osorian position, and you know the Osorian position is he's laying down flat on his back, and she's straddling him, that goes straight, that sends electricity straight into his heart. And it will, because remember, the heart is the seat of consciousness. Even in ancient Kemet, the heart was the seat of consciousness. So when Osiris or Osir, or some of you know as Osiris, um, some of you know him as Teddy Pendergrass, because that was also Osiris. But um, when he was when he was chopped up into 14 pieces, that was the 14 pieces of his consciousness. So it was Oset, or Isis, as some of you know her as. But it was Oset who was able to heal his heart, to rejoin the pieces of his consciousness, to heal his heart, you know what I mean? Um, through that particular position that um, I guess they call cowgirl or whatever, you know what I mean? But in, in effect, it was actually um, the Osorian position. So we can heal each other through that that electric, that magnetic and electric experience of, of sex. But keep in mind, like Osor and Oset, they were married, you know what I mean? So it wasn't just some like random guy who put up a, a Instagram ad and was like, yo, I can heal you with my, you know, magnificent sex. It was it was someone that she already had a vested connection with. And remember that when they came together, they came together for the purpose of creating Haru. So again, nation building. You know, that's the thing. Like I said, you can't really separate the mother from the father, or the father from the mother. You know, because whenever we get together, there has to be an interrelating string and spirit of love that exists between us. That's a lot of times. See, that's what I'm saying. Like when you're using the wrong land, this is turning into a freaking class. Just, I was just going to talk about the rain and jump off. It got a little bit longer, but I don't mind walking in the drizzle. But um, that's the thing. Like when we're using the wrong language, you're segmenting spirit from sex from love. You're creating a separation between the three of them, and that's the problem. So now, when there's a when there's a divorce or there's a breakup, it's very easy for you to act unloving. Sometimes, you know, you know when you really messed up in the head when you and the person messed up in the head when y'all hate each other to be restraining orders and all of that right then you contact each other and be like we're gonna get back together but keep it on the L don't tell nobody cause the sex is so good <laughs> you miss that sex so much you like oh man oh, I can't do it I can't do it I can't last you know so you end up getting back together but you don't want anybody to know because it's so obvious that y'all don't belong together. You know, like that's an, that's an, that's a peace to Hannah. That's an example of like, you know, you've separated those different components. And that's because you've taken on that ideology and that phraseology of the Western society that creates that separation. That's the actual problem. You know what I mean? But when you start using phraseology that is indigenous to you and you normalize yourself within that phraseology, they be stuck in the root chakra. Yeah, sometimes, man. Sometimes you get stuck in the root chakra while you're doing it. Sometimes that happens, man. You know what I mean? Every man has been through that, man. Sometimes you you meet a, a sister and you second guess her. You second guess her. You like you don't really like her at first, and then she keep trying to, you know what I mean? And once you once you make it happen, you get stuck like two pit bulls. You know, and you be coming to your arrival and she be coming to her arrival and you know she'd be like oh her voice turning to your voice see that's when you know that like you really become one her voice gets like yours she'd be like oh i told you it was good and you'd be like i know it's so good i told you and and both of your voices be deep that's getting stuck in the root chakra <laughs> you know what i mean Nah, that's not good. Let me. I'm just messing around. Right <laughs> I gotta be careful because I know a lot of times when I talk, y'all take stuff what I say literally. I'm just playing. <laughs> that does happen though. You know what I mean? That does. First time every man can testify to that. First time you had an old head. First time you had a cougar. That happened. I know it did. Cause those cougars, boy. And then the cougars, when they relax, their voices get deeper from years and years of of partying and smoking and drinking. When they drop their composure. Their voice comes down from like C sharp. It'll drop down from like C sharp 
to like A minor, right? So it'll go C sharp. Eh, eh, eh. Yeah, because it's not it's not A. Because if it was A, it would still be in harmony. So it drops lower, and it'd be out of harmony at the same time. Oh, it's good. I love you. 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 Bu, 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 beloved. <laughs> he sounded like Danny Glover and Beloved. <laughs> bu, 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 beloved. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, see, I need to stop playing, though, because really what we're talking about is the rain, okay? We're talking about the rain and, and God's love and the love that God has for humankind uh, is displayed in the way that God rains down on us and stuff. You know, but uh, yeah, man, people get stuck in the root chakra. What are y'all talking about? You rolling. Yeah, because y'all nasty. That's the problem. <laughs> Your toes be curled up with her toes. But a lot of times we get to that age, our toes just be curled up. It don't even have to be nothing happening. My toes are curled up right now. They stay that way. You know what I mean? But, but, but love it. He said, he said, what you doing here? <laughs> What you doing here? <laughs> Make me feel good. Make me feel good on the inside. <laughs> hey, you remember his feet in that movie? Oh, my goodness. All oh, his feet was taut when he was walking. And he ran into Oprah. And she was like, Paul D's. And she looked down at his feet. And she, oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. That's how some of us men's feet, you know, as we get older. You know what I mean? Our feet start to look like like you got hey pops you got your boots on <laughs> nah i ain't got my boots on pops mom said you can't really wear your boots in the house i ain't got my boots on <laughs> you know but yeah man we just got to get that together man we got to start fertilizing the earth a lot more man we we, we messing up <laughs> but i ain't doing one of these lives in a long time I'm trying to keep up with everything you know yeah he had walking feet he sure did yeah, he was walking through more uh, more dead bodies. He looked like he was walking dead. He had walking dead feet. Feet looked like cinder blocks dipped in, in turkey gravy. But uh, let's see. I can't go through all this, man. I don't know. It's... I write a lot of songs in a minor. Yeah, it's because minor is the feminine key. Major is the masculine. That's why. Minor is dark. It's negated. And, and major is masculine. It, it's outward. You know, the the minor always wants you to add something into it. That's why it's easy to sing on top of minor, because it looks for something to add, like a woman. A woman is what you add into, and a man is what does the adding. So when you do major music, it's all happy and bright. And then minor music has that dark feel to it, you know what I mean? Sunlight is responsible for moonlight, okay? As a man should shine light on his on his woman. Yeah. <laughs> I had an accident. Help us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Her voice would drop a couple of octaves on you. But you'd be good. It'd be good. It'd be that good drop. You'd be stuck. You'd be stuck. <laughs> yeah, man. But, nah, there's a lot of good ideas we got, man. We just got to fertilize them. Everybody's trying to reinvent the wheel. And that ain't going to that ain't gonna get it, man. You ain't got to reinvent the wheel, man. You just got to, you know, um, you, got a lot of, you got a lot of females, too, that was birthed out of movements that were demanding for change. And then they showed up, and then you had no fertilization to give them. That's the other thing, man. A lot, a lot, of, a lot of people got to, like, up their game. So that way, when they're looking at you, because I'm even looking at some, that some of the women do some of the dumbest things. And I'm like, that's not what you do. That's not that's not what you're good at. But no one's telling them that because the dudes, the, the guys don't have any any game to really give them. You know, so we all going to go out here and do the same thing. Let's all go smash the window. Let's all go hold up the sign. That's stupid, man. You know, everybody has. I, I don't I don't want to talk about protests or nothing like that. I mean. You guys do whatever you feel like doing. You know what I mean? If you want to be a pussy, you pro I mean, if you want to protest, you go ahead and protest. But what I'm saying is, like, we have to, like, recognize that each of us, you know, do something a little different. And um, that's where the nation building comes in. Like I said, that, that ability to join together, which...
which some of so many of us missed the point like that's how we got here you know and we're negating each other out of the equation unfortunately and we're negating our our talent and we're, we're negating our skill because we can't see each other man and that's because we're using the wrong definitions that's the actual problem we're using the wrong definitions to, to define each other and like i said it creates psychic idols inside of your head you know so you begin to even idolize and create a separate body of what love is and what affection is and that's like when they say like there's a thin line between love and hate you start to see your natural counterpart as your enemy and it's very easy to love and hate somebody because like somebody just said like they don't recognize their own value right when you don't have a sense of your own self-worth whether it's a lover or whether it's a society you'll develop a love-hate relationship because you'll send them what you consider to be your measure of love they won't reciprocate it and Within your mind, you're saying, but I'm a lovable person. Like, why are you not loving me? You know, that's that's always there. So then you'll begin to hate them and, and, and resent them without really understanding the nature of who and what they are in, in converse or in contrast to the nature of who and what you are. You see, that's why, like, people will love someone and be, like, stabbing them and killing them. I love you. While they're killing them, they're stabbing them because they hate them and love them at the same time, you know, because... The definitions are all off. They're calling each other the wrong thing. They're expressing their, their affection wrong. You know what I mean? It's all off, man. And you can't build a nation when there's no interrelation or interrelating thread of love that lies between you and that other person. See, that's that spirit that exists between you two. And when that, that intertwining is disrupted, and how is it disrupted? By the language we use. We disrupted by the language we use, you know. So when you interrupt that that intertwining, man, it becomes love hate. So it's the same thing that you have with the sick society. It becomes love hate. This is the greatest country in the world, but you know we just need to stop uh, brutalizing and everything. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not what you're saying. It is then. <laughs> you know? I don't say too much, man, because I'm all, I'm already on enough list. I don't need to be on no more list. You know, I already got to go to the airport too damn early as it is now. They always pull me to the side. Always. You know, so I'm on enough list. You know. But yeah, man, balance, words must equal actions. No doubt. But you know what, E, was crazy is that the words do equal actions. It's just that we don't be knowing what we're saying. So we end up with the actions that we don't necessarily want, man. We, we're using the wrong words, and then as a result, we're deriving the wrong action. Like I said in another video somewhere along, I was like, we don't ever use the word resistance. You know, we, we, don't nev we never use the word mobilization. You know, we, we just use words that always speak to us being uh, subservient. What, what do you think is really happening in the world? The world's on fire world's being cleansed the, what's happening in the world right now is what's always happened in the world rewards and punishment that's all jasmine it's just rewards and punishment you know you can't function outside of your natural positioning but for so long before you start to take on the qualities of something that's unnatural and artificial so that's not long standing we we haven't really been invested in anything that's um yeah, I always scan the environment, Alderay. That's just from that's just from years of being in the wrong environment. <laughs> that's what that comes from, you know. Years of being in the wrong environment. You um, and I and plus I like to know what's going on around me, man. I, I don't, you know what I mean. I, I just like to know what's going on around me. You know what I mean. You never know which way you gotta go, right? You never know. You know what I mean. You start shooting over there. You gotta know there's an exit over there. I know back over there, I, I, I ran one day, there was a fence that you could hop. You know what I mean? Like, you got to know what's happening. You know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, the world is on fire, and people are given an opportunity to become God again. And if you, <clears throat> if you choose not to become God, then you're going to have to go away with everything else that's temporal. You know, people have all of these different ideas. Okay, cool. Well, people have all these different ideas and these different opinions on 
what should be happening and it's primarily based upon the desires of their own heart and that's what got us in trouble in the first place especially as melanin dominant people man i say melanin dominant you know the the, the new latino because that's new what we call latino and you know what i'm saying caribbean and the north american african the aboriginal you know the, the blacksican you know um we have divested ourselves from our positioning, our global positioning in the universe as as the key deities to the universe. That's what happened. You know what I'm saying? So as a result, man, we're now living like like temporal humans, which is an insult to the humans, because it's like we pray for rain and the rain comes. The humans pray for deities and the deities came and then we got here and then forgot what we were supposed to be doing. So then we started acting like the humans. And every time we have this cyclical cycle of us behaving like the people who we came to teach, then like morons, forgetting what we came to teach. And then now the people who barely understood what we came to teach is teaching us back to us, but they teaching it to us wrong. And now everybody's effed up because you're being irresponsible. It's like a child who tries to befriend, uh, I mean, a parent that tries to befriend their child. That's so irresponsible. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you came to the planet to teach people what heaven was like. You know what I mean? You came to the planet to show them, like, this is how we move in heaven. This is how royalty move. You know what I mean? Like, from down to how you spoke, to how you dress, to, to the soul that you imputed into your music, everything. And you can't, you know, a great example of that, man, you listen to the old school song. Um, it's old school to y'all. It's not really old school to me, but, you know, we are the world. Right? Michael Jackson and Bruce Springsteen and, and Bruce Springsteen, Sidney Lauper, Lauper, um, Huey Lewis, you know what I'm saying? Bunch of people directed by, um, Quincy Jones, right? Well, Quincy Jones and Lionel Richie actually composed it, right? If you listen to the song, everybody sounded horrible except for Michael Jackson, right? Like everybody was trying to outsing Michael Jackson, which is, I'm sorry, that's just hilarious. You trying to outsing Michael Jackson. Come on, bro. You know, that's like trying to out gay RuPaul. You know what I mean? So, you listen to the song, everybody's trying to out, they screaming, well, 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 you know, like Sidney Lauper is over there screaming and Michael's just looking from the side like, this man done messed up my own song, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's about to take that glove off and just smack the crap out of it, but you know what I mean? Um, but it's like, he's trying to show you like, yo, bro, like this is how you sing with soul. This is how you impute soul into something. And... They were like, you know, like like Quincy could have stopped that and said, listen, Sydney, Huey, shut the F up. We're just going to let Michael sing the whole thing. You'll be in the video, though. Don't worry about it. Right. So that's what I'm saying. Like, we're always putting ourselves in environments and afraid to say who we are, af afraid to be who we're supposed to be. And as a result, we don't understand that we bring calamity to everybody as a result. You know, we're, we're always wanna, we always want to praise Kemet and things like that and not realize that Kemet was a center for learning. And it wasn't just melanin dominant people who were learning. Everybody was learning, you know what I mean? And we allow people to bring their ideas and whatnot. So what's happening is what is what happens. Like there are certain there are cycles of Armageddon. <laughs> like there's no the end. There's no the beginning. You know, the creator is the alpha and the omega. So this doesn't stop. So we look at things that happen and we need to learn to look at them in cycles. And unfortunately, we don't do that. There's always new endings and there's always new beginnings. But we always do the same thing. You know, afraid to say who we are. Interesting observation. No doubt. No way. I ain't going to say your name. <laughs> I'll get you on WhatsApp. But, uh, but, um, uh, yeah, we are, we just always afraid to be what it is that we are. And we just repeat this cycle over and over and over and over again. We always forgetting because we lack focus. We fall in love with the world too quick. You know, like, we don't realize how much that we sustain. That's, that's the reality. We don't realize how much we keep sustained and how much we keep in the air. And if we would just, just divest our presence, we always talk about divesting your spending dollars. F that. Divest your presence. Divest your presence. And then see how the balance of power begins to shift like it's shifting now. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like, that's what's happening. I mean, to answer the question, like, and it's going to happen again. It's going to keep happening until we wisen up to our natural positioning in the universe. You know? So, I'm going to make a move. Um, Because the rain, the rain is clear, so I can see clear now. You know? Like, you've become addicted, and they've gotten you because you won't remove yourself from your comforts. That's the problem. You know what I mean? How many of you are ready to go live out in the woods and wash yourself with a gallon uh, milk ca- milk container and poop in a hole and cover it with some leaves? Live like an animal. You know? And because you've been fashioned, like I said, it's just like how we approach love. We use the wrong terms, so now we, we become addicted to something that doesn't even speak to our greatest intelligence because we're using the wrong words when we meet somebody. We use the wrong words to define our children. And we create this whole, it's like inception. You create this whole world inside of your subconscious. You see what I'm saying? And, and that becomes a new world that you live inside of that becomes the underpinning for the conscious world that you exist within. You see, so it's the same thing that we've done with everything. You know, we've created this false sense of necessity on things that we don't need. <laughs> and that's how they keep you in prison. You see, because you think you need certain things. You think you need a 24-hour store to go get Slurpees and cookies and play lottery. You need that. You think you need air conditioning to give you arthritis. You know, you think you need forced air to dry up your skin and to dry your hair out. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, you think you need all the junk food because you're so lonely and you need some comfort food. So there's a narrative that's been established within your head that now helps to fuel your addiction to the system. And you are the creator energy. How long do you think the creator is going to play a sucker for you? For you, you're just a human. At what point does the creator say, "Look, look, dog, like I blew myself into your head so you could come and do some magnificent, magnificent stuff." And the people who came and did what I told them to do, your stupid ass turned them into idols. <laughs> you turned them into idols. The Muhammad Ali's and and the Michael Jacksons and you know the Emoteps and the Hatsep Shut, Hatsep Shuts and you know and and the Shaga Zulus and the Shiete Wayos and and the um, Ya Asante Was, you know. All of these people who came and actually fulfilled the mission that I blew into their, their brain, you now idolize them. You know? So how long do you think I'm going to let you keep playing me like this after what I've given to you? At what point do I step back and say, you know what? The world is a harsh place. And because your hard-headed self don't want to listen, I'm going to let you experience what the world is on your own. Well, here it is. <laughs> This is what stuff looks like when spirit is extracted from it. This is how the world looks when you take spirit out of it. It looks like diseases, um, plagues, violence, and no real defense from it. No real intelligent response to the violence because your intelligence comes from your spirit. And you've been so disconnected from spirit, you're just walking around dumber than anybody on the planet. You know what I mean? Like, that's what's happening. That's what's happening. You see? So... You know, you can either get back in alignment or you can still keep sitting trying to, you know, theorize what we going to do, what we going to do. You know, the one thing you've never done, separate and go back and be God again. Get back strong. Build, build yourself as the kingdom of the creator and reflect that again. Stop thinking that it's um, it's cute to be ratchet. Stop thinking that, sh- that stuff is cute. It's not cute, you know? Or like I see these stupid memes. I'm a spiritual gangster. What the F are you? Do you know what a gangster is? Don't be saying stupidness like that. I'm a spiritual gangster. Get the F out of here, you know? Or, um, yeah, I'm, you know, I like incense and I like sh- sage, but, you, but if you do this to me, whatever, I pull out a gun. Shut the F up. Like, don't say things like that, bro. <laughs> Don't say that. You know, like, what what paradigm are you establishing and creating? 
you know, by saying things like that. And how disrespectful is that to all the genius that's been placed inside of you, man? So that's the answer, man. People got to learn some respect, man. And now they're learning it the hard way. Like, you thought you was the gangster. You learning respect the hard way, man, because there's a there's a word that we have for the creator in, in the old classical kingdoms, and it was Anpu. And Anpu later became Anubis. And Anpu was headed by a jackal. So some people called him the dog-headed deity, right? So dog. Now I'm now I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a um I don't know the word I wanna use, one of them fake conscious dudes. I'm gonna do a correlation. That's how them fake con- conscious dudes correlation. That's how they do correlations and y'all be like, that's deep, that's deep. You know. They be like yeah, because, you know, Anpu was the dog-headed energy, and he was the king of the underworld. He was the ruler of the underworld, and Anpu, or Anubis, ruled the underworld before Osiris came down into the underworld and took that position over. So Anpu is an earlier form of Osiris. Now, when you look at Anpu or you look at Anubis, you're looking at a dog-haired deity. Dog. Think about that, brother. Think about that, brother. Because you got to understand that everything that's in heaven reflects itself on earth. And we live in a society now. Where, we, where the politicians have become gangsters. So they're trying to reflect what's in heaven. Think about that, brother. Think about that, sister. So if you think about it, dog, D-O-G, D-O-G, D-O-G of the world is God. If you take the word God and you put it backwards, you got, you got dog. D, or like we would say the, but you could say D, OG, original gangster. God is the original gangster of the world. You see what I'm saying, brother? That's what I'm, that's all I'm saying, brother. You think about it. See, that's the type of stupid stuff they be saying. Oh man, y'all be falling for it. I don't say nothing because I don't like to, I don't like to call 